Good morning. Today uh, we're going to read through Psalm 45. Uh, Psalm 45 was written by the sons of Korah, uh, probably a song that was sung to the king. Uh, some people call this a royal love song. And a uh, very interesting psalm to read because it's uh, written in an era to the king and the queen, in an era that we don't live in. But still many things that we can learn as we pray through this type of psalm. So some days you're going to be reading a psalm, depending on if you're reading through the psalms, 1 through 150. And you're get, going to get to a psalm and you're going to go, wow, what, what do I do with this? Or how do I approach this? And uh, I'll tell you the things that I try to do when I get to a psalm like this. Uh, so let's just read and, and pray through this psalm together as we're praying to God. Uh, to, Yahweh, my heart overflows with a pleasing theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is like the pen of a ready scribe. You are the most handsome of the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips. Therefore, God has blessed you forever. Gird your sword on your thigh, O mighty one, in your splendor and your majesty. In your majesty, majesty ride out victoriously for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness, let your right hand teach you awesome deeds. Your arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies. The peoples fall under you. Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of your kingdom is a scepter of uprightness. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Your robes are all fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From ivory places, stringed instruments make you glad. Daughters of kings are among your ladies of honor. At your right hand stands the queen in goal of Ophir. Hear, O daughter, and consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty. Since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favor with gifts, the richest of the people. All glorious is the princess in her chamber, with robes and are woven with gold. In many colored robes she is led to the king, with her virgin companions following behind her. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In place of your fathers shall be your sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore nations will praise you forever and ever. Amen. So again, here's a song that is written at a time where the musical The King and I comes to mind, where we have the king of, of Israel and, and the queen of Israel, and their relationship is talked about, and how uh, the, the sons of Kor that write this song and perform uh, in the worship and lead the worship for Israel, uh, their respect for the king and the queen. So what do we do with that? And we pray through that. Now, the first thing I would do with that is go, okay, God, what, what can I learn here about me uh, at the time that I'm living in now? So in the, in the culture of a pandemic, in the culture of things that we're seeing in our country, I've wrote, written just a few of them down here, a uh, culture of individualism, trying to define what true freedom is in our country, uh, consumerism, where the middle class is pretty much being emptied and there's becoming a very clear distinction between those that have and those that have not. Uh, as we're dealing with social justice and racism and sexism in our country, gender inequality, we that are reading this Psalm are what I call a divine us. So we are the family of God in a culture that we're reading a Psalm about a king and a queen like can get confusing uh can maybe some of the psalm can make us angry i can see parts of this psalm where uh women would question uh some of the things that are being said that the queen needs to do to uh allow the king to do his job and to uh the relational part of that king and queen relationship uh but here we are divine us that's trying to define biblical freedom in our world that I believe hopefully looks in our, especially in our house churches, as a group of people that are needs-based, 
they're gifts based that God wants us all to use our gifts uh, from Acts chapter 2 both men and women Jew and Gentile young and old and our Holy Spirit led so how do we apply this psalm first of all I would say when I read this I go I need to make sure I pray for the king uh, it's very easy to get back into Numbers chapter 11 through the next, I don't know, six or seven chapters there where the people grumble. They grumble against Moses. They grumble against the leadership. They grow up and grumble against, at times, Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. Uh, there's times uh, Miriam and Aaron grumble against Moses. And uh, it's very easy in times like we live in to complain and grumble rather than to pray for. Uh, we need to pray for our leaders, uh, no matter what we feel about their leadership. And we can decide that by, at times, vote and other ways that we can talk to each other about that. But we need to pray. We need to pray for the king. Secondly, I think about I need to imitate the good. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be a king. <laughs> uh, I'm a 67-year-old person that has influence on a few Uh I, I build my uh, coaching rela uh, coaching uh, uh, concepts on the circles, that there's a circle of trust and a circle of influence and a circle of concern and a circle of kindness. Uh, so I try to be kind to everyone that I meet in life. Uh, that there's some people I'm concerned about, but they're not in my influence circle. And so uh, uh, I can pray for them. Uh, I can pray for those that I'm concerned about. But then there are people I influence. You and I both have people we influence. Uh, how does this psalm fit into influence and in the people that trust us, the very inner circle that we have? Uh, imitating the good. Let me read some things that are good about the king. Grace is poured from his lips. Do my lips uh, express to people relational grace? How well do I listen? Am I willing to listen through the edge? Am I willing to be humble? Uh, as one lady points out, you know, there we have a problem with white fragility in our world. And I'm willing to be, to listen through my fragility and to not be so fragile that I can't hear what other people have been feeling for maybe hundreds of years. And now I'm getting to understand that feeling and feeling some of that myself. Am I gonna live in denial? Or am I going to live in a relational grace? Uh, God's splendor and majesty uh, is named here. Am I living in a way that I reflect God's splendor and God's majesty? Uh, do I live in a creation that I'm thankful and grateful for? Do I take care of it? Uh, am I aware that God created the world and sustains the world and provides for the world that I live in and it cares about uh, the creation that he has put here. Uh, the king is to, to ride out in majesty uh, for the cause of truth and meekness and righteousness. Uh, am I that? I can learn that from this psalm. I can ask myself today, am I living for the cause of truth? Am I living out and acting in such a way that the cause of truth that's being presented, am I meek? Am I a disciple? In the definition of a disciple, am I still a learner? Have I learned it all? Have I arrived? Am I still on the journey with Jesus and with Father and with Spirit? Am I willing to be Spirit-led? Am I praying about the Spirit leading my life? And then am I leading it through righteousness and justice? The last thing I would say here as we close out is to realize that in the world we live in, we are foreigners and aliens as God's family. That the ultimate king, as we read a royal psalm today about the king and the queen, that the ultimate king of kings is our God. And that we live in a world where we are foreigners and aliens as U.S. citizens. Maybe God is trying to show us a little bit of that because of the pandemic we live in and the world that we live in that we thought, oh, other places and other nations, yes, they have their problems. They have their problems when they vote. They have their takeovers. 
they have their problems in their economy, uh, but we're the world, we're the world's fixer. Uh, we're the nation that goes in and takes care of everybody from our perspective. Maybe from the world's perspective, we seem like empire as our nation. Maybe our government seems like Pharaoh to other nations. Maybe we're living in a world of Isaiah 40 through 55, where we have to learn now to live under empire, and we're not a nation in God we trust. But we have become very self-focused in trust in ourselves and looking for quick fixes and linear thinking that will not solve the problems that we're a part of today. I pray that as we read Psalms like this, so we don't just skip over them or get mad at them. I, I, again, I can see that, you know, as a, uh, as a woman reading about the queen, there's some things in here that are very exciting, and there's some things in here that are not so exciting. But even as a man or a woman, we need to realize that we want, in a spiritual sense, the last thing this verse, this, this verse says uh, in, in, in our psalm today. I will cause your name to be remembered in all generations. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and forever. So as we live our life today, as we think about our world and the world that we live in this week, I pray that we will focus on who we are as God's people and we can have the impact, maybe not as a king or a queen, but that the people we lead and the people we serve and the people we influence will be blessed by the grace of our relationships. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and he gives you peace. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you today. Love you dearly. Have a great day. Bye-bye.